passion and uh, everyone loves the American sports car, the Corvettes. I'm Ronnie Edge, I uh, live in Jacksonville, Florida. Been here all my life, um, married my ch childhood sweetheart and uh, we've always been Corvette enthusiasts. I guess the way I got involved with Corvettes is I always liked them and when I was a senior in high school, uh, they had only been out I was a senior in 62 and the first Corvette came out in 53 and I'd always liked them and so when I got out of high school I was fortunate enough to find a used 56. My first car was a uh, 1950 Ford Coupe that my, my dad had bought me. We lived at Jacksonville Beach at that time and my dad had bought it um, prior to me being old enough to drive it but I was able to drive it around Jack's Beach uh, limited limited amount. Uh, but by the time I was old enough to drive it legally, I'd already pulled the old Ford flathead engine out and put a 55 Corvette engine in it. So I guess that's really part of the Corvette legacy too with us. Back in 63, driving the 56, going to pick Pam up. Back in those days, we wore white socks with penny loafers and Levi's and the car would leak and run down the inside of the dash and get the dust and dirt off of the wires and stuff. And, get on my white socks and time I go to pick her up my socks look dirty. <laughs> but, uh... but the 63 was a lot of fun. Like I said, Pam drove it to high school, I mean to JU, and at that time we didn't have any children but we had a little white poodle. And Pam used to like to dye the little poodle different colors just for kicks, you know. And we we've got several pictures of that little poodle, I think in pink, sitting up on that Corvette just you know, something to do with. <laughs> We've just always liked Corvettes and had them throughout our married life and we now own four. We're in the process of looking for another one. This is, a, a, of course, a 1957 uh, fuel-injected Corvette, which um, I'd been hearing about the car for a number of years and people would say, man, you ought to see this uh, 57 Corvette in St. Augustine. And I'd heard it was black, I'd heard it was blue, I'd heard it was white. And he said, well, he wanted to contact me because he knew I was interested in, in Corvettes. He didn't know at that time it was one I'd been hearing about or kind of seeking uh, in the past. But when he called me and we found out which one it was and we went and looked at it and, w and we bought it immediately. When we were there looking at the car and um, decided we would, would wanted to purchase it from him, uh, he brought out a few things that his mother and dad had saved or collected over the years. This is a, a picture of the Chevrolet dealership here in Jacksonville that it was delivered to in August of 1957. His mother had bought him the car originally, had taken when he brought the car home, as we all do when we get a new car, we like to take pictures of it. Well, those photographs are dated, and I even have the envelope that they came in. Uh, these photographs, we have the dated photographs that came in the envelope, which, by the way, is dated as well as the price for what he paid for those. This is um, original photos of the Wayne when he got married to the, his wife, who is his present wife today. It's pictures of them on their honeymoon with the car. Fifty years later, the same couple, same pose. It's uh, Johnson, the original owner, and his wife on their honeymoon, and then they did this photo uh, later, and it was really a nice story. We have the uh, price sheet or the buyer's uh, documentation from Gordon Thompson Chevrolet that documents this came as a fuel injected Corvette which is really hard to prove. Most uh, people that own these cars that are fuel injected cars, which is rare, can't prove that it was really a fuel injected car. Came, we can do that by the documentation from Gordon Thompson Chevrolet. So that was in there. There was some magazines, a uh, magazine where the car was featured on the cover in the centerfold of Corvette uh, Corvette News, uh, we, he gave us that stuff from them and um, brought it home and we've made a f uh, several minor improvements and entered it in many shows and the people we bought it from, it was a son and two sisters that inherited the car. Uh, their mother and father had owned the car since 1966. They made the decision to sell it. Uh, the car only had two previous owners. We're the fourth owners, and uh, everyone's lived within 30 miles of where the car was delivered originally in Jacksonville, Florida in August of 57. We were invited to bring this car to the Hilton Head Concorde d'Elegance, which is an event 
that you have to be invited. Then you have to submit photos and a little bit of history of the car and then it goes before a review team and then they decide whether they want the car in their show or not. So fortunately they, they, they decided they would like to have our car so they invited us to bring the car up which was a wonderful experience in uh, Hilton Head and um, we took the car up there and, and first event like that of that caliber that we had been involved with actually with the car. We've been to the Concours the elegance of Amelia and thought what a wonderful show that was and thought this would be a lot of fun and it was. Uh, but the proudest moment, I guess, is when Pam and I had gone to lunch while we were up there with the car. Uh, we went; to, They treated us to wonderful lunch up there, all the participants. And we came back from lunch. We were there while the judging was going on, but the judges don't tell you anything. So we went to lunch. We came back, and the, the blue ribbon that we have hanging in the garage here was on the car. We got to <clears throat> drive the car up to the winner's circle, and they, at that time, they spoke about the car and presented you with the award and you can see here that we were first place best in class and then Rick one of Rick Hendricks cars everybody knows who he is got second place so that was pretty exciting <laughs> to to win a to win a show like that and beat out a uh, we beat out a Rick Hendrick car which Rick Hendrick is the uh, race car owner and uh, has a huge collection of Corvettes and we beat out one of his cars. He got second place and we got first. So it was a pretty, pretty big day. But if you've got any kind of documentation, like where the car was delivered, even something as simple as where the car was delivered and copies of titles of the previous owners, that kind of stuff is, is, is good provenance to have with the cars. But to have what we have is almost unheard of, to have the amount of documentation we have on this car. But anywhere we go with them, we. They always get a lot of attention and they're just a lot of fun to, to drive and own.